training actually makes your work actually more effective. How many of you guys agree with that? Okay, when you're with somebody, okay, there's a few things that happen when you're with somebody. Number one, when you're with someone, what does it do? It puts what? It puts pressure, right? It puts pressure. It pressures you in a psychological way where you know you need to what? Perform and look good, right? Especially when you're a leader. Can you, imagine you're, can you imagine being a leader as an example or a person of influence and your new guys looking up to you saying, damn, this motherfucker sucks. You don't want to do that because you want to be what? You don't want to be embarrassed, right? So embarrassment is a big thing, right? You also ha have what? It's a little bit of, of ego where you're like, damn, I'm, I've been here for six months. I've been here for six weeks. This guy's brand new. I got to fucking, you know, do what I got to do. So having, having someone that you're training has always been the best thing on the planet. I have, oh, I have never, I'm telling you right now, I have never, ever, ever, ever sold anything without somebody. I can't even remember anything I've ever done without building a team or building somebody with me or training somebody. When I say the word building team, it doesn't mean you're building a massive team of 50 people. I'm talking about, it could be two people on your team. You understand what I'm talking about? So this, when you're training other people, it puts a lot of, it, uh, uh, it may not put the pressure that you may like, but it puts a positive pressure for you to go out there and perform. How many of you guys agree with that? It makes your ego a little tickled because you got to go create results, right? You, it has a little bit of your step in your game, okay? What else does training someone do for you? Knowledge. It reinforces your knowledge. It reinforces, absolutely, it reinforces your knowledge. Reinforces your knowledge of the business that you're in, the product knowledge that you have, the industry, whatever it may be. You start getting smarter because you're starting to, you're, you're re regurgitating information you've learned. And usually the best teachers are the best learners, right? Usually, right? Because you're, that's the best way to learn something is to actually act that out and teach it out, right? You guys seen that triangle where it's like, you know, if you listen to a lecture, you learn less than when you're actually creating action and when you're actually teaching. You ever seen that triangle? You guys have it, I can send it to you guys. But the best way to learn, 90% of the information is retained when you actually teach it. So the second you learn something, the best way to learn something, it's what I've always done. I learn something in a meeting, I learn something in the audio, I learn something somewhere, first thing I'm doing is I'm fucking teaching someone that shit, right? Whether it's my team, whether it's my coworkers, whether it's whoever, right? Why did I do that? Because I wanted to reinforce my knowledge. What else? What else is the positives of training somebody? I think it, for me, it's like, keeps things fun. It's like, less likely to get Yeah. It's fun. Working with somebody is more fun than by yourself. I used to hate working by myself. I hated it. I used to always want to go with someone. Yeah, you want to come with me? He always came with me when I wanted to knock or Jason or someone in my team or somebody, right? Because I always wanted to have fun with it, right? Because I wanted to have a conversation with someone while I'm, you know, while I'm working. What else? Motivation. Motivation? Mm -hmm. And it motivates you when you have what? Motivation. I think also like accountability is a big one. Somebody you're training is like you know usually more on the new side, and they kind of bring that new person energy. It's kind of like new person energy, motivation. They motivate you a little bit. Follow the systems, right? That's what you should. Ah, it forces you to what? Follow a system, right? Which is the accountability part. When I was training guys, and I used to do my own little Michael Baraya pitch. Nobody would be able to stick around me. As a matter of fact, they didn't want to work with me because it was, I, was, I was too amazing for them. You guys know what I'm talking about? They looked at me, I was like, wow, I can't do that. And that was the biggest mistake and biggest fall of why I couldn't build a team bigger than fucking three people ever, right, at the time. Because they looked at me as, wow, Michael is so amazing. Now, what it did was it tickled your ego, made you feel good temporarily, but in reality, you couldn't what? You couldn't build a team. Nobody wanted to, nobody could understand, everyone thought it was too complicated. Right? So what I learned was I had to make it simple and follow a system and create a, a pattern where a normal person could just look at the information and say, wow, I can do that. How many of you guys look at the pitch right now? You know you can do it. Okay? How many of you guys look at the, the close, the presentation? You, you see me do, you, you can do it. How many of you guys can do it the way I do it? Why? Right? It's not complicated. It's not like, wow, Michael's amazing. No. Wow, the, the pitch is amazing. Wow, the presentation is amazing. Wow, the, the, the style of asking questions is amazing. You understand what I'm talking about? I don't need people to say Michael is amazing because all that does is fill my ego, but it doesn't fill the pockets. I learned from an old, old mentor of mine. He's like, you cannot fill your ego and your pockets at the same time. I was like, wow, that's so fucking true, right? You're either going to fill up your pockets or you're going to fill up your ego. Pick one. Which, which one was this guy? I don't know. That was the old. That was, that was me when I was 23, 24. 
You guys see this? 23, 24? Bra-bra, bra, right? If I shave my beard, I look just like that. So, so understand that when you're training somebody, it does a lot of things for you, not just for the new person. That's why I've always, I will never ever do anything by myself, ever. I don't do nothing by myself. Real estate, I have a team. Solar, I have a team. Everything I'm doing is always with people. You guys understand the power of having to train now. But you have to also learn that a lot of people do this. This is what happens. They put on their training hat and they're like, oh, I'm training. And they can't get out of that mode of, of creating results. How many of you guys have been there? Where you think that you're working by training people. Anybody been there? You think that you're working, but you're, you're training, but you, and you can't get your own results because you think you're training. How many times that happens to people? Happens a lot. People think that because they're training, their results are not going to happen. In reality, what you need to understand, with training, this is what training is. Training equals results for you and for the other guy. If there's no results, there is no fucking training. You understand? There is no such thing as training because everything, let's say you train and there's no results. What happens? They don't believe. They don't believe the training is actually working because there's no results in front of them. So for example, when Eric goes to the field for an hour as an example, right? He goes an hour with you. You see him make an appointment, correct or incorrect? You ever see him make an appointment ever? You've never seen him make an appointment? Okay, who's ever seen him make an appointment? Okay, you see him make an appointment. How fast did he do it? Huh? Hold on. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> he did one appointment. Right? But he has, let's say he does an appointment. Okay? And you see that appointment. You see that appointment shows up. You see that appointment again in a presentation. You see that appointment close. What do you believe as a new person? Everything you fucking told me is facts. Yep. But if you go out there and you're training someone how to generate appointments, you're training someone how to get sales, you're training someone how to present, and there's no fucking sales, everything you talked about means nothing because they don't believe, yeah. right? All you're trying to, what, what is training really? When you're training somebody, what does that really mean? Knowledge and belief. You're transferring your knowledge, you're transferring your confidence, you're transferring your belief system, you're transferring what you know into the other person so they can actually do the same thing when you're not physically there. If I'm training someone and they can't do it when I'm not there, that's not training, that's babysitting. My goal is to give the skill sets that I have, the mindset that I have, and as many tool sets that I have to give to this person so he can do the things that I can do without me watching him to do it. That's what effective training is. Does that make sense? And training is not a one-time thing. Training is a constant repetition. Training is a constant repetition, right? What is training? A constant repetition. What is training? Passing your personal beliefs. What is training? Yeah, constant repetition of investing in that individual, but during that process, you're creating results. Okay, if you want the training to stick even harder, do one extra thing. Create massive results for them and with them. I just said it together, right? For them and with them. Not just for them. Sometimes people train and they do the appointment and they give it to them. That's not training. You weaken that individual by giving them free appointments, Right? Sometimes in the beginning, if they're trying their best and they slip and you save it, great. That's their appointment. That's awesome, right? That's okay. But don't always do it for them because then they, what they can do for themselves, you should never do for them. Does that make sense? What they can do for themselves, you should never do for them. If you're going into a presentation with me, I'm not doing it for you, right? Depending on your skill set. Now, if you're brand spanking you, I'm going to do it with you, right? I'm going to do it for you together. But I'm not just doing it for them. I'm doing it together with them so they can understand what the value is. Because then what happens is they want to go with me all the time and I'm giving them free fucking lunch. This is not fucking freebies. This is not communism, right? This is for them to learn how to be effective when I'm not there. The only reason, and I tell this to guys, when I take somebody out with me, there's expectations. I tell them, listen, my whole objective with you is not for you to just learn how to do this. My whole objective is for you to get so fucking good that me and you now can train somebody. It's going to take a couple of weeks, a couple of months, but I need you to get in the right mindset to learn everything that I know how to do. Because if I'm going to go out there with someone, I'm not wasting my time with them. I'm not trying to just get them good and that's it and on to the next person. I want a team. I want to duplicate myself. You understand what I'm talking about? The reason why you guys are suffering and a little bit in pain sometimes is because you have not duplicated yourself properly. You're training people, they quit. You're training people and they quit because they have not understood. The reason why most people quit is because they don't see the bigger picture of why they need to be somewhere. Can you guys agree with that or no? If you want to make money, learn how to help other people make money. Help enough people... Get what they want, by default, you will get what you want. But your focus has to be on how do I get other people around me to win. That's the only reason why I come all the time because I want to help you guys win. Because if you guys win, I win with you guys. If you lose, I'm basically losing with you guys. 
So the whole objective is for me to help what? Transfer the knowledge, transfer the confidence so you guys can go out there and win. Make sense? That's what training effectively is. If I could take it to another level, if I didn't have the, the, the back end shit that I need to do, I would physically be showing you guys how to do it. Physically. Because you would understand what work really is because 90% of people do not know what work is. In my opinion, I'll tell you how I know that. Some of you guys are still in the office at 1.30 sometimes. Whatever the reason is, whatever the reason is, it doesn't fucking matter. When it comes to work, work doesn't give a fuck what the reason is. Work only cares about one thing. It's a very, you know what work is? It's a very fair thing. I love it because it's super fair. Your input will equal your output. And if you use multipliers on your input, you get multipliers on your output. Right? That's where people have shortcuts or, or a strategy or a tactic, right? But your input will always be your output. So a lot of you guys are putting, let's say, if you really count it, let's say you're in the field at 3, you leave at 8 as an example. That's 5 hours times that by 5 days, that's 25 hours. And you want to make a million dollars in 25 hours. Whereas another guy who literally gets to the field, my club arrived, who got to the field at 1 o'clock, 1.30 every single day. I didn't leave on that one day. You wouldn't catch me except Tuesday nights because I was going to the Amway meetings at 8 o'clock at night. But every other day, six days a week, this was my hours. Count up those hours versus this guy right here. I mean, it's just common sense. I, just, I, I wasn't the smartest guy in the room. I just worked. And during those work, I never went to the bathroom in terms of, uh, you know, 7-Elevens uh, 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 and all those other shit. I was just pure fucking work. I didn't shit in the field. Why would I fucking shit between 1.30 and 9 o'clock? In the streets or in a customer's house if I needed to, but I really never needed to. I did everything before work and after work, and if I needed to take a piss, take a fucking piss in the street or go to a customer's house when I'm knocking on doors or getting an appointment. It wasn't that difficult. I'm not saying you need to piss in the street, okay? Don't, don't take that literally. What I'm saying is that I promise you if you audit your time, you're not working the way you think that you're supposed to work. You think you're working, but you're really not. And that affects what? Your training, which affects the results of the person, and you're dragging motherfuckers and showing them how to... I'll give you another example. You're driving from appointment to appointment. How many guys have done that? You're wasting time driving around in fucking traffic to go to appointments. There go, like, you got to be strategic with your time. Now, if there's an appointment that you need to go to, I would personally... How many guys are confirming your appointments? Or are you having them confirm? Who's, who's, having, who's doing the confirmation themselves? Bro, if I'm going to take my time to go to someone's house, I'm going to call them. By the way, how many times you call them if you're confirming, if they don't answer? You call three times, what happens on the third call? They usually fucking answer. Usually, if they're next to their phone. Because when someone sees a, a, a random number one time, okay, they ignore it. A second time, like, huh, they ignore it. A third time, like, okay, what the fuck's going on? Hello? Got you, right? It's always worked with me, right? Three, it's called three tap, voicemail, and a text. Three tap, when you use three phone calls, they don't answer, a voicemail on the last one, and then a fucking text. And I'll call another fucking two, three times, like during that appointment time. Make sure they're fucking, maybe they showed up late, maybe they were showering, who knows, right? I don't know. Maybe they forgot, maybe they were in the kitchen. I don't, I don't know, I don't care, but I'll call four, five, six times. I don't give a shit. And a lot of times they'll answer. And if they don't answer, I don't give a fuck, next. Right, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get out of the grind mode. So, and also, what happens when you're training people, right, or when you're working? The second you work hard, let's say you get an you work hard, you get an appointment. 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 Okay, now you have a great day. Tomorrow is you, these are all set for tomorrow, right? This one cancels. This one cancels. This one is a close. This one cancels. This one cancels. What happened now? You got a result, but what happens now? Spend the whole day not really working the same way. Working. Exactly. In my, in my mindset, right? This is how I think. I'm like, fuck, yes, I did get a result, but I lost a full fucking day of creating results for the next day. You understand? So in my mind, I actually like it. I like it when I have a close. Absolutely. I love it. It's money in my pocket, but I also hate it at the same time because I just lost potential what? Work ethic for myself. By the way, I'm talking about self-gen, guys. I'm not talking about training, uh, having someone set appointments. I've never had anyone set appointments for me. You guys are lucky. You guys are blessed. Maybe, maybe my blessing was that I didn't have anyone set an appointment for me. Maybe the blessing was I always self-gen everything I ever did, which was pretty cool because I controlled the outcome of the result. Like the quality of the lead was determined by me, not by somebody else, right? This doesn't mean that you, I don't want appointments. I, I want both, guys. I want both. But do you guys see how I, how I think a little bit and how I prepare myself for the next day? Like, I get, I get frustrated if I'm not creating, if my calendar is not filled in. 
with fucking 10 appointments a day, I'm frustrated. And I'm not going to depend on them or anyone else to give me those 10 appointments. I want 10 fucking people to say, I want to sit down with you every single day. That's what I want. Because out of those 10 motherfuckers, five are going to show up. And that gives me the result that I fucking want. Because I want at least one sale a day. If I have five presentations that show up, I know that if I sucked, at least one of them is going to sign a deal. Can you, can, you, can you do five presentations and get one to sign up? But what we're doing is we're sitting with two, hoping that one closes. How many guys can agree with that? That's the problem. You guys want to be fucking Michael Marive or Eric Christ on your first or second month in business. You're not going to do that. I'm sorry. I could probably do it at this point. I have a 40, 30%, 50% close rate if I really tried and I really pushed myself. But even then, I put myself on a lower bracket. I'm like, you know what? 25% close rate for myself. 20% close rate. I don't need to be a magician. I don't want to be like squeezing fucking lemons and getting a lemonade. I don't want that. I don't need that. I'd rather have so many fucking lemons. It doesn't fucking matter if it's lemon or not. Eliminate or not. Does that make sense? I want to have more results, not from little fucking... Uh, uh, a lot of people, they want, they want too much out of too little, in my opinion. So you have two presentations that week and you expect to have fucking three presentations closed. So what I would recommend is having fucking 12 fucking presentations that fucking day. And I promise you, you're going to have a very productive day. And you won't give a fuck if customers show or don't show. You really won't. It doesn't matter because you have so many fucking presentations. You guys, you understand what I'm saying? Now, what happens to the person in your training when you're doing that? They know that you're fucking serious and you're not fucking, you're not playing around. And they see, wow, holy shit. This motherfucker got 10 appointments that day, eight appointments that day, five appointments that day. How are you training? How are you working? You gotta think and strategize. This is not just throwing mud against the wall. This is a strategy. The most successful people in this business or in any business, they use strategy with fucking work ethic. It's not just, Ugh! Right? You got to think smart about that. How do, how do I effectively train somebody and create results and work effectively in the field? And the only way to do it is to think about what happens with every audit your time. Audit it. I'm serious. Sit down and audit your time. Sit down and watch how, like, you guys see how I eat lunch. How fast do I eat lunch? I fucking snort it. I'm a fucking multi-millionaire snorting my lunch. I could be taking three-hour lunches. I don't do that because I want to fucking grind. I know the time is being crushed. I understand that time is, is going whether I like it or not. So I don't walk outside to get lunch. I fucking snort that shit. Audit your time. Audit your work ethic. Audit your training, right? Training is not you doing this. All right, let's sit down in the corner of the curb and talk about an hour of your pitch. That's not what training is. You know what training is? It's showing them how to get it done. And as I'm doing it, I'm talking to them. So as I'm creating an appointment, watch this. da 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 Boom, done. Awesome. Have a great day. Here's my number. Doom. Okay, let's go to the next door. What'd you learn? As I'm walking there, what'd you learn? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Awesome. Okay. You know why I said that? You know why I said that? Why do you think I said that? Why do you think I said that? Awesome. Now I want you to try this right now. Go ahead. Do it. Go ahead. 